Good evening, everybody. I got Dr. Kyle with me today from Cornerstone uh, Physical Therapy. Kyle, how are you doing? Great. How are you doing, Randy? Doing all right, man. I'm excited to talk to you. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, of course. What have you been up to this week? Well, what's uh, what's the big thing going on right now? Uh, big thing going on right now, just treating patients. Um, the My side practice that I'm working on right now, Cornerstone Physical Therapy, we're having a grand opening at the gym I work at work out of um crossfit effort they're doing their grand opening and i'll be a part of that so we're promoting that right now along with the kilo barbell club so on that note uh what got you started on putting out that content on tiktok uh so biggest thing for me um being a physical therapist i'm just trying to promote the profession as best i can and also give everyone the tools to treat themselves or at least take care of the little bumps and bruises that come along the way. Um, biggest thing for me, um, I mean, just trying to spread the word. I was an athlete myself, uh, a lot of injuries through high school. And the biggest thing that I felt was lacking was the quality of care that healthcare system provided. So trying to promote that any way I, I can is going to be beneficial to any young athletes or anybody following any of my pages. Yes, I agree. And um, I saw that you had some videos on how to stretch if your shoulder was sore and stuff. Really like that because I had a bad oh, yeah. shoulder for a long time. Yeah. Um, any tricks? Some of, some of the exercises were helping. <laughs> yeah, there you go, man. That's actually probably one of the most useful things. Nothing's worse than having a sore like tendon or joint and just trying to plow through an exercise knowing that it's uh, it's 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 daunting it really is yeah and a lot of people just aren't educated about what to do and how to do it and that's where our profession really comes in and shines it's more than just going to your doctor it's about finding your doctor of physical therapy and doctors it's like two minutes this is the problem next this is the problem next yeah. whereas you have the uh, opportunity to know me more intimately yeah, you know, when you're exactly. when you're dealing with yep. someone, you get way more into that detail. Oh yeah, I want to know everything about you, why you're having this pain, what you want to get back to doing. We're problem solvers. We're not just okay. Your your muscles fixed now. Now go do your thing. No, we want to make sure you're doing everything that you can to get back to either what's the sport that you want to play, the hobby that you enjoy doing, or even going and playing with your kids. Awesome. That's pretty cool, man. So uh, I did talk to a guy on the podcast a couple weeks back, and I don't know if you've ever heard of this before, but it was like this uh, Russian contraption, Provelia or something like that, where it literally Ooh. suspended people. It had four, four connectors that went on your wrists and your ankles, and you literally put counterweights on this and stretched yourself like you were on some kind of <laughs> medieval rack. I guess it was something to do <laughs> with uh, relieving the tension. It was kind of like the same concept of the inverted... Uh, table where you lock your legs and you're dangling and you're just relieving all yeah. the pressure. It was kind of that kind of concept, sure. but it was wild. It looked like the rack. It looks like something straight out of the 1400s in Europe. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the concept's definitely there. Same thing with the inversion tables. You're trying to increase joint space throughout the entire body at that point. Maybe a little excessively, but um, inversion table, just trying to increase uh, this space in between the joints and the lumbar spine letting gravity just kind of pull them, let some tension relax. So exactly what you were kind of thinking, just to a little bit of an extreme, it sounds like. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was wild. I was like, this, I can't believe this thing even exists. But, you know, the Russians come up with wild stuff. They, they came up with the hyperbaric chamber and a couple other really profound things. So you never know. Science right now is really dabbling in wild little nuances of what the human body can do. And I'm always intrigued, no matter what it is. It's always sure. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, always trying to stay up on the latest research. I like that. So, Kyle, on that note, uh, what is uh, some of the things you do that are pretty standard? And is there anything you do that you think is uniquely yours that can be uh, utilized that, that everybody else doesn't really know about that you've seen a lot of good results on? For sure. Um, so, standard-wise, physical therapists, we're movement experts. That's what we prioritize ourselves in doing, being able to understand a movement that you're having struggle doing, whether it's lifting something off the ground, lifting weights, performing, and going about trying to correct that movement impairment through either soft tissue massage, 
joint mobilizations, things along that nature. We've also do like scraping, taping, dry needling, things along that to decrease pain so we really want to. Um, where I feel like I bring a unique, at least, perspective compared to some of bigger chain physical therapy companies is that uh, we get... In- you're, you're breaking up on me, Kyle. Under- the one figuring out what was happening. Gosh, nah. yeah, Internet's, yeah, I just got that signal. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I, I apologize. Uh, you really, sorry. I lost you when you were saying the the individual stuff and then some of the the, the more custom stuff. Yeah. So for individuals trying to get um, anything from scraping, taping, dry needling, soft tissue work, joint mobilizations, all these modalities that can be used people that pain can move well and get back to the things they want to do that's pretty standard with most physical therapists and then what we try to do at least what i'm trying to do with my business cornerstone physical therapy is get more individualized as best we can working one-on-one full hour treatments and figuring out the problem solving it and then making sure it doesn't happen again where i think the health care system right now kind of falls short is that they take care of the pain then they don't either fix that root problem of why the pain was caused and that it happens again, or the patient's still not ready to get back to either their sport, the activity that they want to do, and then down the road they get hurt again. Yeah, the, the, I agree with you. The, um, between the hospitals and the insurance companies, they don't allow for enough time for full recovery. I don't think they have the luxury of putting in the time that's needed, so the pills do become like a, like a crutch to compensate for the, the half time oh, yeah. that's probably used. So you combine all that together, it's really frustrating. There is definitely a, a space there that can be, uh, a void that can be filled. So I appreciate sure. that, and you guys are, are pushing for that. Um, so how long do you go to school, Kyle? That, that, that has to be a lot of uh, schooling for... Uh... <laughs> yeah, it, not too bad. Everyone has a bachelor's degree and then goes to graduate school for three more years to get a doctorate. Um, it's a clinical doctorate, so it's a little different than writing a thesis, getting a PhD, or being a medical doctor in the sense. Um, so just a little different on the time frame. But we are still, for most of the states in the country, direct access providers. So it can be anybody coming off the street to come see us. And then from there, we decide whether we're appropriate or not to treat them or if we need to send them to their primary care provider. Okay, fair enough. And um, I did see that you were doing some uh, shock therapy on the muscles. How, how does that work for you, and how much is that incorporated in, in, in a decision? What Where does that all play into to some of your PT? Yeah, for sure. So uh, that's dry needling, what I was talking about before. Not all PTs are licensed with that, but a majority of them are. It's a growing modality in our space. Really good research backing that sort of treatment. Um, I find a lot of good success with that with athletes too, just getting them out of pain in order for them to start moving again, pain free and working back towards what their goals are as far as their sport or uh, any activities they're trying to perform. Um, What it does, it goes, it's like acupuncture, but it's a little bit more um, in depth, literally it goes into the muscle. It doesn't just penetrate the skin like typical acupuncture, dry needling goes right into the muscle belly and to like keep it simple we the big things it decreases pain increases blood flow so that we can improve movement wow okay that's wild all right so i work at the va and i did get hurt one time and the pt kt went through and helped me out a little bit for a couple months and they did have a machine that kind of rubbed up against your muscle that did some kind of electricity to it but it was nothing that went yeah all the way into the muscle itself i've never i didn't even know that yeah. was a thing man that's wild yeah it sounds uh yeah, that sounds like a TENS unit that you were using, uh, electrical stimulation, pretty similar concept, except uh, with dry needling, we hook that up to a needle and penetrate to the targeted tissue that we're trying to treat. Yeah. So we can get pinpoint to exactly where we want to go. I was going to say, you probably get into a more detail of that exact muscle that you're aiming for instead of just a, oh, yeah. a surface uh, effect. Exactly. Yep. Both good for pain management. That dry needle just a little bit more intense, intense, um, with more research and better results backing it. Good deal, Kyle. That's so cool. All right, man. So you said you did some sports for a little while. How did uh, how did that correlate into what you're doing now? Was it uh, nah. 
how that pretty out. pretty big factor. Okay. Yeah. Um, I wasn't probably the best athlete in high school. I'm not gonna nothing special for sure, but having injuries throughout high school didn't help my athletic career one bit. Um, I kept re-injuring the same thing. Um, I've had several left knee procedures um, for the same reason every time. It was that okay, I'm getting better. I'm able to go back to sport, but the continuing of care was stopped right there and being a young kid like you get some direction like yeah go work out but what do I really need to do here to keep this from happening again not just getting told by my coaches to try to push all this weight like that's what you need to do to get stronger and be a better athlete I was missing a couple components and now my goal is to try to prevent kids from going through that too and helping athletes achieve their true potential and get them to be the athletes they always wanted to be yeah, that had to be frustrating, man, to see everybody else moving forward and you're over there hustling and trying your hardest and you heard it again, man. How, how many times did that happen, man? Um, so I went in for four left knee procedures between the ages of 12 and 16. Yeah. Yeah, you put up the hat after that. That's too many times, too young. That's rough. Yeah, so... There's, there's a component there that's missing that needs to be bridged and hoping that maybe we can start solving that issue there and hopefully I can be a part of that. So are you trying to work with young athletes? Is that something you've been focusing on? Yeah, athletes in general. Um, I just have more of a passion with youth athletes. Uh, CrossFitters, that's what I got into of late in these past couple of years going to college. Um, so those are two of my primary patient populations that I try working with on my own. Um, and helping them is pretty fulfilling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, is running bad for your knees? Is that something I should stay away from? Because I like running, and I keep hearing people say, oh, you can't do that for cardio. You're going to end up getting your knees replaced. And I'm 44, yeah. and I, don't think, I think my knees are fine. No, I, I think you should keep running. I think you should do it as long as you can. The thing that most runners do is 80% of them run at 80% intensity all the time. So making sure that we're varying the amount of load, the strain that we're putting on our body and not, not just constantly doing the same thing. Having days where we push, days where we back off, days where we stay in the middle, and then having a plan that's more catered to you. And it's not just, I'm going to run 10 miles every other day. That's not a great way for your body to adapt over time that's where we start getting things to wear down and then in combination with not doing any strength training to address some of the weaknesses that we might have that can lead to injuries down the road where people get concerned but if you have a good plan moving forward running's great for your body it's got to be able to load the body and keep it moving so what do you mean by strength training to compensate for anything what, what would be an issue that you're talking about there so typically what I at least see with runners is weakness throughout the hips. So some of the glute muscles there, they are stabilizers of our lower body. And sometimes those get weak over time. Those lead to other compensations with the way that we step, walk, run, and can lead to injuries in time there. So making sure that you get in strength training or at least some weighted exercises, something simple like squats, lunges, basic exercises to accommodate for the load that running puts on our body. Now, isn't it amazing that if there is something wrong with your body, it will compensate and twist itself and manipulate it, and it will make it work. And it's oh, yeah. it's insane what the body's willing to do to keep everything oh, yeah. moving. It, it's crazy. The body's a, a marvelous thing. Even with people hurt, they still find a way to move, and yeah. that's where we come into. we got to re-educate the body to make sure it's moving the right way again. And it's It's crazy what some people end up looking like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you seen anybody any frozen up spots where the leg rolled in or something was compensating for a sore knee or hip like you were talking? Oh, yeah. A lot of a lot of knee injuries just in general are either due to a problem at the hip or the ankle. Something's not moving right. The knee's at the mercy of the hip and the ankle is what I like to tell them. Oh, wow. And it's either because we don't have the mobility at either joint or we don't have the strength and stability necessary to hold that leg through whether it's running other sports things like that and then finding those muscles that are weak those impairments so deficits and abilities to move through the joint on either end fixing those and then over time people start getting better 
just with that too. We don't even sometimes treat the knee or do anything to the knee. Wow. Okay. Um, huh. Okay. Um, do you think you should stretch before you run or after you run or both? <laughs> so I think a good dynamic warm up. So no static stretching, no holding a stretch, but working through something that gets your heart rate up to the heart rate that you're going to be working at for your run. So working to a moderate pace, getting into for most people, 130, 150 range for their heart rate. So pulling the knees to the chest, quad pulls, just light little things that you'll kind of see people like doing this Sunday. If you watch the pregame when they go out and warm up, typical things that you should be doing too before you run. And then when you get done with your run, always a nice cool down, either lighten the pace up when you're done with your run, however distance or whatever the distance is that you're running or just going for a nice walk and then doing some static stretching. So longer stretches like 30 second to 60 second holds after uh, to really address any muscles that are tight. Huh? Very cool. I always like asking people questions like that because I, I never had a professional with me. So what I do is kind of like, yeah, yeah. but uh, it works. So I'm, I, I, lo I just love hearing those different ideas and especially yeah. someone that has yeah. the expertise. I, I appreciate, um, but you know what I notice when it, whether it comes to exercise, food or whatever you're doing, you always take everybody's opinion and everybody's and you tweak everything and find a way to turn the pattern into something that your body and what you want. So everybody, oh, yeah. everybody's slightly dynamically different. And I'm learning the key for all that for me is uh, what can I do sustainable? You know, I can't, like yeah. you said, you can't do 10, 20 miles every day. You can't do it seven days a week. Yeah. But if you do for two sure. miles a day, five days a week, totally sustainable. Exactly. Right having a load that you can handle that's not over your threshold so that injuries don't occur. Yeah. Same thing with like what you're talking about with diet. I'll go off on that a little bit. Just the best diet is the one you can be consistent with. It's not a diet that you're going to try for a month or two. That's supposedly really good for you. And then you fall off and then you're back to your old habits. It's one that is sustainable. So making little changes here and there that you can be consistent with, just like with training with anything in life, really. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, on that note, what is one of uh, your big strong points on diet? I'm, I'm sure that has to come across often on your on your training. Yeah, for sure. So for diet, I would like to keep it simple with people that are trying to make changes. So finding anything that's more of the processed foods, we want to eliminate those as best we can. Carbs aren't bad. We don't want to just think that they're the enemy and evil of everything. We need them for energy. It's whether or not we're putting them to use or not with how much we're exercising, things like that. So what I like to start is keep it simple. Find your basal metabolic rate. We can look this up to get a general idea online. You have so much calories that go in. So say that I need 2,500 calories in every day. That's what I got to hit. And if I want to lose weight, I got to decrease that number so that there's less energy going into my body, less fuel for my body to use. And then I'm going to lose weight to accommodate for that. If I want to put on weight, I'm going to put 500 calories in above that. And then I'll put on either fat, muscle, whatever it may be. Yeah. I agree with you. Our carbs are not as bad as they sound, but they've got to be the original carb. It's got to be a thing of corn or a thing of potatoes. It can't be potato chips. It can't be processed food. Um, I'll be honest with you. I'm definitely heavy on the protein. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I like that. Yeah. But that, that seems to uh, to alleviate the vast majority of problems. I don't know what it is, but protein seems to be the king. I don't know why the pyramid's all upside down and backwards, but... Uh, no, no, it is. I mean, the food pyramid's created by the people that sell the food, so... Oh, that's a good point. They're going to put their things at the bottom. Like the dairy industry, they're big leaders in the food pyramid being constructed, and they want to sell milk, they want to sell dairy products. Dairy is really not the best thing for you. Really? I mean, okay. I didn't I, know that. So, um, I'm not a huge expert in it, but lactose, the molecule that digests the lac lactose from the dairy products, that's not something that's typical with humans that was adapted with the origination of um, bringing in cattle and then drinking milk throughout human history. So, 
over time we've developed the ability to digest that, but others haven't, and that's why people are sometimes lactose intolerant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I love cheese, man. Rough. I love milk. I love it all. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm from with, I'm from Wisconsin, and that is by far one of my favorite cheese curds. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah dairy. You're dairy country, cheese, man. Cheese yeah. it up. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm doing my home state dirty a little bit, but. Try to limit the dairy and uh really okay yeah so i put cheese in my eggs every morning man is that bad is oh. that is that a horrible thing i mean you gotta live a little too i'm not gonna be like oh you're you're inhibiting like all the gains you could be making i, I mean live a little everything in moderation like yeah. we still gotta enjoy life enjoy what tastes good it's there but yeah yeah I mean, ideally, if you wanted to be really good about your diet, yeah, I'd think about cutting it out, substituting it out for something else. Okay. All right. Ah, that's a tough one, man, because I don't have a lot of vices. I don't have a lot of vices left. You know, I drink coffee. <laughs> I catch myself biting my nails once in a while. And that's, I think that's, and milk, now, now it's, it's dairy. So, but um, I'll be honest with you, I'm trying to think. I mean, I can go without, but I don't put any sugar in my coffee. I just, I just hit a splash of milk in there, or creamer, or whatever I got. Yeah, I, I, I put creamer in my coffee. I, I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm pretty bad too. Yeah. We're not perfect. <laughs> well, I, I definitely try to stay away um, from sugar. I know sugar is just straight poison, and uh, especially everybody talks yeah. how horrible sugar, uh, salt is. I think sugar is worse. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a. Trying to minimize the sugar for sure. Uh, yeah. One thing with salt, though, I wouldn't demonize that either. Uh, if we are doing a lot of exercise, physical activity, we still need to replace the salt that we lose and get that sodium back in our body, too, for good electrolyte balance. Oh, yeah, dude. I almost killed people. myself. I almost killed myself a couple of years ago. Didn't realize how valuable salt was, and I was flushing it out of my body. Yeah. My whole body started aching. And my coworker's like, you're an yeah. idiot, man. You sound like someone that's been on a roof for two days and drinking nothing but water. And that's literally what I was doing. I was just pounding water like crazy. And, uh, yeah, I had a Gatorade and I was fine. But uh, all my joints were starting to hurt. Yeah. I was I was fatigued. Yeah. It was brutal. Your body's brutal. just... Yeah. yeah. Your body's pulling all that out of your muscles. It's trying to find any salt, whatever electrolyte that it needs yeah. from... From the body so you can keep moving doing your thing and eventually that hurts that cramps brutal it's so painful i, I would have never guessed so yeah i did that to myself a couple of years ago i was just trying to lose a lot of weight and try to do things as fast as i can and like i said i didn't have anybody i definitely should have googled things more often if, <laughs> if nothing else you know chat learned. chat gbt yeah. wasn't out yet so you couldn't ask chat gbt so i i don't know I haven't typed that into it yet. How to lose weight? <laughs> I'd be I'd be I shocked if it wasn't perfect because everything I've asked it so far has been spot on. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. And Google's gonna be doing the same thing pretty soon. So I'll be honest with you. I think all the the web browsers are just gonna go that that route. In general. Won't surprise me. Yeah, but it is pretty cool. It's a fun little thing to play with. Um, yeah. On that note, I'm trying to think of how else to, to pick your brain, man. Uh, Kyle, let's see. Um, shoot, man. What else do you do? Uh, what else did you do while you were in college, man? You you, had, you spent all that time in college. What did you have uh, any clinicals where you were actually hands on, like a doctor? Did you have to do a lot of uh, clinical work? So yeah, for clinical doctor, we have a nine month nine total months of clinical rotations three separate ones um, they're all doing the same profession all doctor physical therapy uh, we work underneath a clinical instructor and get to see various um, populations that we get to treat so different acute settings um, so hospitals outpatient settings like some of your bigger clinics that most people get referred to after they go to see their doctor for like back pain um, I got to do a cool one with some aquatic therapy um, during my first rotation, which was pretty cool. Um, it's a great avenue for people that are dealing with a lot of pain, especially chronic pain, that just need to find an avenue to get moving again. And if they can't do that on land, water is always a great option or alternative. So what was that like? What was the, the, the aquatic version? What was uh, 
the ins and outs of that? Is it just doing everything slower? So I was just doing everything in the pool now. Um, so your weight gets reduced once you get into the pool. If you're halfway in, 50% of your body weight. If you go all the way up to your neck, it's 10% of your original body weight on your joints. So people feel a lot better when they get in the pool and we're able to do a lot more with them to at least prepare them for doing more exercises on land, kind of get that ingrained in them, show them how to move well, learn new motor patterns so that when they do get out of the pool and transition back to, to land, uh, then they start moving a little bit better. Okay, very cool. Uh, on that note, um, with hot and cold therapy, how much is that something you're involved in? Do you put a lot of... Uh... I wouldn't say that I put a ton into that as far as what we do. I think there are great avenues. I try to keep up with research on that too. That's been super popular of late, going into saunas, cold therapy, or cold tubs. Um, they both, they all have their place um, when done correctly, and I think they're all beneficial. It's just having access to regularly doing it, making it a part of your lifestyle, and not just doing it sometimes here or there. Yeah, I only did the, the cold bath thing once, and it was brutal. Yeah, it was brutal, man. It was yeah. brutal. I might do it again, but, but you're right. Tough. Yeah, you got to do it all the time, right? You got to do it like, I think you got to do three minutes, four days a week for it to really take effect. And Yeah. I don't know if I and want to do that for Sauna days. even longer too. That's a lot of time too. Oh yeah, yeah. I do I know, uh, the saunas at my uh, at my gym. I, I do fifteen minutes to twenty minutes five days a week. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. I tried it a little bit over uh, when I went home over the holidays, and that was great to just get that in for a week. I felt really good, but no, I don't have one when I'm back home doing my thing, unfortunately. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's the easier version if you can get access to it. It definitely is because there's no uh, mm -hmm. storing ice, pouring a tub full of water. But I guess if you're up north, yeah. I guess you could have ice already ready, rocking and rolling outside. You just crack the ice and jump in. Yeah. But uh. Oh yeah. I'm in San Antonio. There's no puddle of ice. There's no bucket of ice in the backyard. Yeah. I mean, even if I still did still live in Wisconsin, I don't think I'd do that. I, I think I'm too soft for that. Yeah, my kids thought I was crazy. They were looking at me like, what the hell are you doing? I was like, I don't know. Everybody else is doing it. I got to give it a try. <laughs> yeah. It'll definitely make you mentally tough. That's for sure. If you can sit through an ice bath that long or not much else you can't do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just got to man up. You just got to do it. I'll be honest with you, I'm glad I did because otherwise I can't say I did it, you know what I mean? So at least I can say yeah. I did my three minutes. For sure. Yeah. I, I We have a pool out here um, where I'm staying in Arizona, and one of the cold days in December I went out in it, and it was like 50 degrees outside. I think I lasted maybe 60 seconds. That was That was rough. <laughs> Oh man, I, I grew up in uh, I grew up in Connecticut, and we'd get off the bus, and we'd always like harass each other until someone would jump in and cut a hole in the ice or kick a hole in the edge and see who would go in the in the water first. We did that every year. I, I'll be honest with you, as a kid, I wasn't a huge fan. I didn't care what other people thought. I never won that bet. I don't think I don't think I yeah. ever did. It's just. I think it's called a polar plunge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we were like 14, and we were just egging each other on. Yeah. <laughs> For a good cause, still. Now that, I, now that I think about it, the reality was everybody just wanted bragging rights to say who went swimming first that year. That sounds about right. Yeah. So uh, Wisconsin, uh, did you do a lot of fishing, ice fishing, hunting? What was uh? What was the big thing in Wisconsin? Because I'd never been there. Oh, okay. Uh, for me, growing up, uh, I'd always went fishing with my grandparents. Uh, my grandpa specifically, all the way until I probably left uh, for college. Then after that, I I didn't have my license. I didn't really do much of that afterwards. But definitely enjoyed time getting out on the bay and going fishing for sure. Um, I had a couple hunters in the family, but I just never really got into that too much. Um, but still loved when uh, they take home venison and bring it home to us so a little deer meat I don't know uh, do you hunt at all out in Texas San Antonio uh, everybody hunts yeah 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 there's, there's so many deer I'll be honest with you I didn't realize there was so many deer anywhere New England did not have the amount of deer that uh, Texas has I'm out in the hill country really? and uh, there's herds of them 
Like I live in a small hey, city, okay. like a small city, uh, about 30,000 people. And I would say right in the center of downtown, there could be 10 deer just running around all the time at any given time. <laughs> and my neighborhood. That sounds like Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah, my neighborhood. Uh, what's in my eye? There's uh, about seven deer that walk around my neighborhood and everybody feeds them. My kids feed uh, a 10 point do- uh, uh, buck. By hand, oh, with uh, they, with bread. They just literally walk up to the deer and feed them by hand. And this dude's got 10 points on him. Awesome. And I'm like, how? I didn't believe him. When they said they did it, I didn't believe him. I went outside, <laughs> and there's my daughter. She's 10 years old, just feeding a deer by hand. He even tilted awesome. his head a little bit. I'm like, what the heck? But all the neighbors do it. So the deer, uh, yeah. I don't want to say they're domesticated, but they're they pretty learn. close. Yeah. Well, free yeah. food, man. They're free close. food. So yeah, um, yeah. Now there's a catch twenty two, and in Connecticut there was a ton of uh, public land, and there was a big lottery, and everybody can get their chance to, to to go hunting. Here in Texas, there's yeah. nothing but private land. Everything's fenced. Everything's private. So you need a friend. Oh boy. You need to know somebody, or you need. I think you need to have. I think the rules are twelve or fifteen acres or something like that, to hunt. Oh. Yeah, I think you have to uh, something Jeez. like that. I'm sure there's other rules. I'm thinking uh, so far away from a uh, road and another house. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we have deer from uh, – they imported from India, and you could shoot them all year round. Jeez. Yeah, yeah they, they're called uh, they're called <laughs> axis deer, and they look just like white-tailed deer except for their tail isn't as white. And when they grow up, they still keep oh. their spots. So they got, like, the baby spots oh. their whole life. Okay. And uh, – their antlers are a little like bit really weirder too. There's um, there's a, yeah. a little hook in the front, and then they have the regular antlers. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You'll have to Google it sometime. There's They're like, called uh, what are they called again? What are they? Um, axis, axis deer, and they were axis. imported from India. Yeah. Huh? Do they taste good? Oh, they taste like uh, they taste like beef. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you can hunt them all year round. They taste like beef. It's unbelievable. Yeah, they're way tastier than regular deer. Nothing wrong. Nah. Nothing wrong with whitetail, but they, the gamey taste yeah. definitely is noticeable, and it is almost completely eliminated with this other invasive species that was brought to Texas. Yeah. Really, I didn't even know that. Yeah, they have black buck. No. There's a bunch of other ones. The black buck actually look like antelope, and they have the the swirly. Uh, uh, yeah. Like it's not even antlers. I don't know what they look like. I don't know what the heck they are. It's a wild looking animal. But uh, you can hunt those all year round too. Again, huh. you gotta have so many acres to hunt. They don't want you shooting across the street, kind of thing. Uh, I believe that. Yeah. <laughs> That's just its own different beast over there. Oh. Yeah, it, it, I'll be honest with you. I did not. I didn't realize how much of a culture change it would be on the same continent. You know, you think Connecticut, you you think yeah. America, everything's the same in America, and man, it's a whole other world. Mm-hmm. Whole other world. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Yep. How long have you been living out there? I think I bought a house six years ago, so almost eight years. I think we've been here almost eight years. Um, <laughs> it's amazing when you want to get something done and you don't have a lot of time, how hyper-efficient you can be at something once you do yeah. it a few times. And you put your mind to it and you say, I'm just going to plow through this. And uh, it used to take me like three or four hours to edit these videos. You still there? Ooh. Yeah, and, I'm still here. Do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just said the video kind of froze, but that's fine. And um, there you right. go. Yeah, I can see it moving. Um, I can now, and I just, I did a daunting, the, the last girl was an OnlyFans girl a couple days ago, and I messed up the audio. I was playing with, with uh, Instagram, and I'm listening to someone's audio, and I put it down to like 45%. Forgot that I put my speaker down. I thought her mic was messed up. We spent like 20 minutes trying to fix her mic. Um, daunting task trying to figure out how to edit this and, and separate her voice from my voice and not ruin the, the video. And I was able to do it, man. I was able to do it. Published it today before hey. I talked to you, man. I, I can't believe I was able to do it. Crushed it. <laughs> yeah, I really did. But I, I could do it in like 45 minutes now. I got a preset video at the beginning, preset video at the end. Um, 
I still got a long ways to go on all kinds of other things that little nuances to to getting this up yeah. to, to par, but I, I'm moving pretty quick. Yeah. I think not splitting up the video will make my life so much easier, though, man. I got to go I search bet. out that stupid spot, segment it out, try to make the conversation fluent. Yeah, I, I definitely... I just... Just put a little commercial break in the middle there. Yeah, I should. I gotta, I gotta get someone to pay me to put something in there. <laughs> That'll be your pause. Ah, there you go. That's actually a great idea. I didn't even think of that. Uh, I'll give you credit when that uh, when that comes about, man. All right, perfect. All right, Kyle. Uh, so uh, you said you live in Arizona now. Yeah, that's right. How do you like Arizona? I think my uncle moved down there a few years back, or was it New Mexico? No, I think it was oh. Arizona. Yeah. Uh, either way, like being out here, weather is great. Like going outside, shorts, middle of winter, could never do that back home. Go out, don't have to worry about it. I will take three months of hell over six months of winter. So yeah, no, no, yeah, you don't have to That's shovel the you don't have to shovel the heat. You just have to sit in the yeah, air I conditioning. Just you just need air. Yeah, you just need air conditioning. That's right. Just give me a pool, give me an AC, and I'm good for the summer. So. Yeah. yeah. People ask me how you handle the heat being from uh, up north. I just said I acclimated well to the air conditioning. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're right. There's three months. There's three months where you can boil an egg just there in the air, man. It's like 110 degrees. Man. It's like, whew. Yeah. How, where did this come from? And it's, yeah, it's heavy. Exactly. Yeah. But again, swimming in the pool, that's all it takes, man. That's right. You just need a lot of sunscreen. Hopefully that day. Hopefully you remember. No, nah, I just I just yeah, turned I mean, brown, man. I just turned brown. Ooh, we got all right. <laughs> Natural talent. <laughs> nice. Uh, I, I mean, I'm super happy with the move as far as weather. I mean, the only part that would bring me back to Wisconsin is just family in general. Trying to convince them all to move out here, though. Yeah, right. Yeah, there ain't a whole lot to do out in Wisconsin, though, is there? It's it's a pretty quiet. Especially this time of year. There's a. Uh, not too many things to do. Big thing is uh, drinking beer and watching football, and our team's not in it anymore. So. Nah, nah. So who are you gonna pick, man? You think Mahomes got this or what? Nah, if, if that ankle's uh, good to go and it doesn't set him back during the game, uh, I'm going with the Chiefs. But. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, uh, I'd pick. And I'll, uh, I'll I, stick I, with that. Yeah. I'll try to I do think. think the Eagles have a better team though. Yeah, they're pretty. They, yeah, they're pretty. They're pretty badass. Yeah, offense and defense. They're pretty. Uh, pretty. They fly around to the ball on both sides, and yeah, they're coached well. So and it'll be fun to watch either way, man. I hope so. It should be a high-scoring game. Maybe be the first game to go into overtime in the Super Bowl. That'd be cool. Free football. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I hope it does, man. I didn't even think of that that way. Okay. So if anyone's listening, place a bet for that. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be. <laughs> no, I'm not betting. Yeah, there's no, there's no way. I lost. Uh, I think I bet on uh, on Brady the one time the dude lost, like the first time he lost. Never <laughs> bet on him before. He was like a sure thing for years. Decide to actually do, and I'm like, I'll never do it again. I'll never do mm -hmm. it again. Well, yeah. I, I think I did win a little bit of money on uh, the Red Sox. Way back when they won oh, okay. that that one game where they were three and zero, oh, and the the pennant, yeah, and they came back. I won a oh, little okay. money on that one. Hey, all right, yeah, awesome. Uh, one in a hundred so chance. Big Boston. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Being from Connecticut, you either were a New York or a Boston fan because Connecticut didn't have any of its own teams. Yeah. Yeah. So it was either Celtics or Knicks or Boston or Yankees or you know you just, uh, Bruins. Yeah. Yeah. So I was Boston all the way. We would go to a Red Sox game every year, man. I think I've been. Oh, sweet. I think I've been to 28 games, something like that, 30 games. Dang, oh. okay. Well, we'd go as a family. There was like, yeah, I had a big family. Yeah. About 30 of us would go every year in the summer. And we'd make a weekend out of it, too. So I had a bunch of cousins, and we'd go out and uh, we'd get a hotel as a family, go to the Children's Museum, do a walk through. Uh, uh, the Freedom Trail to Quincy Market. Uh, sometimes I think we'd walk all the way to uh, to the coast there. 
Oh, uh, okay. I haven't done it in a long time, to be honest with you. I should do that with my kids because that was a lot of fun, man. Quincy Market was a cool place to eat. Um, there's old yeah. gravestones from the founding fathers and churches from like 300 years ago and just wild. Huh. Yeah, there's wild stuff. And you can go all the way up to Cape. The Cape is beautiful. I've never been up to the north e northeastern part of the country. I, I think it's definitely worth uh, at least a visit. New York City is not that much fun unless you're loaded. It's not that fun. <laughs> But uh, Boston's yeah. a lot more fun if you're broke. Or not broke, but you know what I mean. If you're not going to be dropping <laughs> Donald Trump kind of money, Boston's a lot more fun. <laughs> and uh, Nope. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I don't know. Kevin Kid was fun, too. But I was a local, so it's totally different. You know, you know everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. But you're right. I do miss some family and friends. A lot of them are moving to Florida instead of uh, Texas, and I'm a little disappointed. You know, now I gotta drive. Yeah, yeah now I gotta drive to Florida. <laughs> that sounds awful. <laughs> oh. Well, I had an uncle, like I said, that lives in Arizona, and he drove all the way to Florida, stopped by, had dinner with us. So I'm kind of like the halfway. Awesome. Well, I don't think I'm halfway, but I'm a stopping point hey. for him. Yeah, good stopping point for sure. Yeah, you gotta yeah. see everybody, make a road trip out of it. It's a, this country is so huge. It's so vast. Uh, doing the East Coast, I thought was a lot more fun, but I remember it as a kid. So we would we would drive down yeah. to Florida to go to Disneyland or go hang out with family down there for a week. And I don't remember it being that big of a deal. But I did it in my 20s, and I was like, this sucks. <laughs> so I don't know, man. I think I might start flying more often. I got a bunch of kids, too, so I, I don't know. But gas last year was way too much. And uh, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't make the trip. I didn't make the trip last year. I remember you, you said you had six kids. Yeah, I have six kids. Yeah, it's a lot. It's, Ooh, oh, it took six house. tries. It took six tries to get a boy. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't stopping. Yeah, I wasn't stopping. I said, "Dude, I've been waiting for you for twelve years." <laughs> that boy's got a lot to carry on his shoulders, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, you got my name and everything. There was no way. I yeah. was like, I'm never getting another chance at this. I have to quit. Six, I'm six deep. I can't go anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so, Kyle, you got any kids? Nope. Uh, I haven't figured that part of life out yet. We're we're not there yet. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a lot, man. Uh, yeah, I don't regret it. I I would definitely do it again, exactly as I did it. Yeah. Sometimes I say I'd wait a couple of years, but I think about it now, I think that's a mistake. The longer you wait, the... it's kind of like starting your own business or doing anything else that uh, you second-guess yourself on. If you're second-guessing yeah. yourself, you probably should have already did it. For sure. Yeah, I don't know. It's, that, that, it seems, that, that seems to be the go-to move uh, on my part. And it helps me just jump into things like starting a podcast. If I think I should do yeah. it, I just do Why it. Why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, you know, I've been trying to carry that over with the kids, right? So my son's six, and he asks a lot of dumb questions, but I'm thinking, you know, i got to stop saying no. So I started saying yes to as much as I humanly possibly can. And I'll be honest with you, it's ten times more fun. Oh, yeah, I bet. Yeah, it's way more exhausting. You that much more involved. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I want to constantly be doing stuff with him. And I try taking him running with me. No one can run. I don't know what it is. I have one daughter that does cross country. She can run. No one else is willing to run with me. I try making competitions, try bribing them with money or not having to do chores. And the old man outdoes them every time. It doesn't even take much. Some of them, they poop out on like... Maybe 100 yards, 200 yards. I'm like, this is brutal. I mean, I'm embarrassed. You guys, I'm about to make a boot camp out of them. You might have to. I might have to, Next yeah. Because uh, 12, 10 years old, you should have unlimited energy. There's no reason for you to be giving up. It's all it's all right here. You're giving up in here before mm -hmm. uh, before the muscles are even sore or, or anything, man. For sure. Get them training, yeah. Yeah, a little uh, adversity there never hurt. So, uh, young kids, can I stretch them a little bit before I uh, run them? Or yeah, uh, same principles apply. Weightlifting, exercise, all that's still safe for kids of any age too. We'll see a lot more videos of it being popularized. Uh, 
kids are doing Olympic weightlifting like at the ages of five, six, all the way up to Isn't that wild? I've old. seen those videos. It's so wild. I don't even know. Is that healthy for a five-year-old to be jacked up yeah. like that? No, maybe not to be like super jacked or anything, but at that point till still treat, teaching them, excuse me, how to train that movement pattern, showing them how to lift things is going to be great for their development moving forward. Okay. They're going to have a leg up on their, their peers when they get into the weight room and learn how to move weight. Oh, yeah, they'll be, they'll be 10 that. times. Yeah, yeah, they'll be 10 times. Because you got to think about it, right? If you do something and someone else is behind you by two years, you jump back in, it's not just a two-year gap there. It's like, it's like a 10-year gap of, of knowledge, memory, muscle, muscle memory, and all that stuff. You know, yeah. you just made me think of something. Have you seen some of the Olympic training that the Chinese do? Have you seen some? Because you were like isolating the muscle and getting that right motion and everything. Have you seen the way they kind of do, like, a, how would you explain it? It's like they're not even bothering to isolate the one muscle. They're trying to use the whole muscle group and kind of just go straight like farmer on on, on these muscles. <laughs> yeah. And I've, I've seen some videos, yeah. Yeah, what is that? Is that I, a I thing? Know, but... I mean, to, to move more weight and load for competition, I can see how that would be applied to just moving more weight in general. At that point, their bodies are strong enough to handle that load. They have the capacity to do that. Now, I don't have a great background in that type of training, so I don't know what exactly they're honing in on to do that, but the more load you can lift, the better it's going to transfer over to some of their other lifts, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How Cause exactly? I, yeah, because I'm thinking it's like uh, you, when you're when you're ha hauling hail, uh, hay, hail, hay. When you're hauling hay and you're you're throwing bales in the truck, uh, you're not using one muscle group and isolating it. You're just chucking that bale. And I I think yeah. um it's that mindset that you just get everything strong. I but I've never seen like professional athletes exercise in the manner in which I saw a couple videos. I was like, this is the bizarrest thing I've ever seen. And they were saying, yeah. yeah, that they were just, we're not focused on making the muscle look pretty. We're, we're focused on making the muscle group work together. Uh, like I said, like a farmer yeah. would. Because you see these guys, not saying they're not uh, defined or anything, but they weren't trying to isolate to make the muscle look as, as bulky as possible. Yeah. They literally wanted to, to, to just push through a day's work and, uh, these guys are like 10 times stronger than they look, 10 times stronger than you expect. And I'm wondering if they're yeah. trying to tap into something like that. I don't know. For sure. So bodybuilding, making the muscle look pretty, they're just trying to contract and make the muscle grow. Weightlifters, they're trying to move the most weight that they possibly can, and they're going to train that way. They're not going to train for aesthetics. They're going to train for movement, technique, and load. Yeah. So what is that? Uh, the, the, some of these guys that are um, like uh, tough man competitions or deadlift guys will be a little bit, I don't want to say out of shape, but they'll have like a little bit of a belly. Is it just that they're pounding so many calories and they don't really care that uh, they're not at a peak shape look? Is that what that is? I don't yeah. know. So, so to a point, they need mass to move more weight. And they need their trunk to be very strong to support their spine because they are going under incredibly high loads. And if they want to do a thousand pound deadlift, they need to create the stability around their spine to be able to handle that. And they need mass around that trunk so that it can brace itself and actually handle that amount of weight. You get me trying to do that, I, I'd break in half. Like they need yeah. that that trunk to to do that and create that stability necessary. Otherwise, they can't do it. <laughs> So Didn't even think about that. Yeah, that, that makes sense. That just comes with the sport. Like they're gonna have big bellies. <laughs> yeah. Now, have you seen some of those guys that move the the ball and put it on top of the pedestal? I'm like, how do they yeah. not break their backs? You you can see yeah. the strain when they get it on their lap, and they wait a second. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, I, I can I, I can mentally picture how heavy that is right now. And this dude is literally arching his back so far to get up there. Because he can't, his arms can't get it up any higher. His arms can't get it up any Wherever it rested on his chest and arm, that's it. If he can't arch his back, he's done. Exactly. Yeah, wild. Wild sports, man. 
that is. Yeah, I got a guy I'm trying to catch that's one of those guys. I'm trying to get him on the podcast right now. I'm trying to negotiate with him right now. I got to get him on there. there I just, I'm really intrigued by the. I bet you they do weird stuff that you don't even think of in their training. Odd stuff. Yeah. I'm sure they do. I that ain't for me, though. <laughs> no, yeah, you didn't. No, 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 no. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm too old anyways. I'm way too old. I don't know how old you are, but I'm almost 45. Uh, I'm not I'm not training for anything new. Maybe a triathlon, maybe, maybe, maybe. I do it. Why not? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm seriously contemplating. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. We do it every year in my town, so uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll jump on it. We'll see. But uh, on that note, man, uh, what are you doing in the future? How's uh, how's the business look? Uh, what what is the game plan for uh, Cornerstone? So game plan moving forward is to grow to that. So that's not the only thing that I do. I work full time for another company still. So this company's pretty new. Um, it's about six months old, and I'm trying to get that to be to the point where I do that full time on my own, and it, it's my source of income moving forward, and then eventually grow that to where I can take on people to work with me too that have that same drive and energy and passion for helping patients, athletes, whoever it may be, achieve their goals and reach their true potential movement-wise. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I appreciate the vision, man. I love seeing someone that has an idea and just uh, goes for it. I work, I'm trying. It's, <laughs> you only get one life. you got to make the most of it, at least give it all you got. So. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. All right, uh, with that, man, go ahead, Kyle, plug away all your stuff, let everybody know where they can find you. Yeah, um, I'm on Instagram at CornerstonePT uh, with the K, and then I'm on TikTok, too, at CornerstonePT, uh, Dr. Kyle. So check me out, hit me up, slide into the messages if you have any questions movement-wise, and if there's any way I can help you, let me know. All right, Dr. Kyle, I appreciate your time, man. I, I, I enjoyed the conversation. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely, man. You have a great night. Thanks, you too. Keep Weather is good. Sun is shining. Shining. Don't get my vibe.